First, take a hard look at yourself and be flexible about making changes. So when a person says, I'm in the doldrums, when an organization says they're in the doldrums, what they're needing is a what? They're needing a second wind. We're needing something to generate some energy and momentum to get us out of the doldrums. Let's get outside the office. Let's go for a walk and talk about how we're doing this. And let's think about how we could do it better. What we're going to talk this morning about are five shifts that each one of us can make starting today to elevate our influence, impact, and inspiration. I want to give you the five leadership shifts. Here's the first shift. Shift, and it's going to sound kind of simple, but in order to go to the next level, you, you and I have to shift from being kind of a victim mindset to a leadership mindset or a growth mindset. The first thing that every leader needs to do is to root out any victim vocabulary, any victim speak, and any victim actions. Does that make sense? That, I'm telling you, three years ago, that was a defining moment. I changed. I dramatically changed how I thought. Here's the second thing. The second thing that I want you to write down, which is shift from black and white vision to Blu-ray vision. Black and white to Blu-ray. And I'll never forget when I saw a Blu-ray, I was watching open range and I thought that horses were going to come right out of the screen. It was like, wow. And I give that analogy because a lot of us are walking around with a black and white vision in our life and in our careers. We know some of the things that we want to accomplish but it's not colorful. It's not Blu-ray. I'm going to invite you to take time in the next, literally the next week and ask yourself two basic questions. What do I really want to accomplish? And what type of leader do I want to be? You've got to create culture, all of what you've been talking about. You've got to create a growth mindset within each individual leader and stretch the parameters and do some smart failures this year and rebound quickly and, and lead your own personal transformation revival. You've got to concentrate on well-being and take care of yourself. I always bring this bucket when I'm local. I get funny looks when I walk into lobbies with this little bucket. But this bucket represents a lot to me because there were three things that I think each of us need to fill, and they were the three things I wasn't filling uh, a long time ago, a decade and a half ago. But the three buckets that need to be filled in each one of our leadership lives is our emotional bucket. There is a physical bucket, and you can't ignore your physical health, and you know that. The big one for me that I focused on this last year is sleep. I was having real difficulties with sleeping. So we've got blackout shades and we do aromatherapy and um, all of these things that have assisted in quality sleep. Spiritual bucket. Everybody here maybe has a little different take on their spiritual life, but I don't think we're machines. I think we're body, soul, and spirit. And for you, it might be reviewing your life purpose. It might be some form of... Uh, uh, Fernando was speaking of uh, meditation. I do a 20-20-20 in the morning. Probably 80% of my days, I would be disciplined enough for the last several years, I've done a 20-20-20. But I'll tell you what, my life has changed because of my ritual hour. 20 minutes of spiritual, 20 minutes of reading. I actually read in the morning. And the final 20 is I get super focused, really super focused around my MVP for the day, my most valuable, profitable work for that day. And I try to narrow it down to my top three. Anybody who's ever trained in any sporting event that's pushed you to the limits, they say when like Marathon, Ironman, these kinds of people, I was over in Kona and we watched the Iron men go by, and that's something else. 90 degree heat on that lava roads. You're like, you got to be kidding me. And when you talk to people who train specialized vents, they go, 
What are you training? Like when you train and you push yourself, what are you training for the big event? They go, no, no, no. You're training for one point in the event when you want to quit. And you're teaching yourself to push through that quitting point. And I want to encourage you in this coming year, anticipate it not being easy. Anticipate pushing. Already program yourself to push through every quitting point. Any innovation that gets stuck, push right through it. Anything personally, push through it. Anything relationally, push right through it. And the greatest rewards will happen in each one of our lives. I want to thank you for the gift of your time. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. What a privilege.